Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to talk to you guys about how, although Linux is very cool, it's very hard to actually give up completely on having Windows installed on your system uh, as a dual boot operating system. It's hard to go pure Linux, especially if you're a gamer or you use heavy multimedia applications like video editors or Photoshop. So it basically comes down to developer support. Linux is still a relatively unpopular operating system compared to using Windows and Mac. And as a result, developers don't really have the time necessarily to dedicate some of their programming to making it work on Linux out of the box and not forcing users to rely on alternative methods like using Wine. So that's why you see companies like Adobe, when they come out with Adobe Premiere and uh, Adobe Photoshop, they might release Windows and Mac versions, but they will kind of ignore Linux because it's just not profitable for them to do so. Since Linux users, uh, generally only a few percent of the worldwide industry, as far as computing goes, uh, desktop computing anyway, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Now, things are getting better. Uh, if we pop open Steam on Linux, we can see that in my library of 627 games, a ridiculous amount, uh, 203 of those actually work on Linux. That's about a third of them, and most of those titles are going to be indie games that have actually been released um, usually through something like Unity, which allows you to export to all platforms at once, which is really great, uh, good for Linux users, because then the developers, they don't actually have to go ahead and create a separate Linux version. They just have to use a mainstream platform like Unity Engine, uh, and then they can export their games to Linux easy peasy. However, um, even still today in 2018, a lot of big budget titles haven't really caught on. I'm uh, grateful that Deus Ex Mankind Divided is actually on Steam, but then but then other games like Dark Souls 3, uh, not so much. Of course, there are ways to get around it. Many games you can emulate with wine. And then, uh, as you can see over here in my start menu, Lutris is another cool open gaming platform, which basically has install scripts uh, for getting games to work through Wine without you having to do the manual work. So it basically helps make it go a lot faster. Uh, very similar to Play on Linux, another alternative out there, uh, which does the same thing, simplifies the installation of those uh, Windows games onto Linux. However, uh, there's a few problems with that, of course. Firstly, it doesn't work with all games. Secondly, you will get a lot of buggy conditions. And thirdly, because it's not the same as running the uh, game on your native operating system, and this also applies to uh, programs that you might want to run on Wine too, it won't give you the same performance as running them on the native operating system that they were actually built for. So you're going to need a better computer in order to play those same games or to run those same programs on the same settings. So there is good news in all of this, which is that I, I would say more companies are starting to take Linux more seriously as a platform to also publish their software on. So you can see on my taskbar here, uh, DaVinci Resolve, which is a professional level video editor, is supported on Linux. Now the downside is it's trickier to get it set up on Linux. And I've heard that some people have compatibility issues with things like getting audio recording devices to actually work inside the app, but it's definitely a start. So in other cases, like when you want to basically have the equivalent of Photoshop, you have to kind of resort to third party tools in a lot of cases, unless you're going to try to run Photoshop on Wine. So uh, GIMP is an obvious tool that you can use as an alternative to Photoshop, and I've covered that extensively on my channel. I think it's really great. Some people complain it's not as user friendly as Photoshop, but it does do do the job. And uh, the same would apply to other tools like non DaVinci Resolve video editors. So you might have like Caden Live here, uh, which is a non linear video editor. And I think they also have a Windows version for it now, but it's kind of in beta. Uh, but these tools, uh, they generally don't have the same user friendliness as something like Microsoft Word or Adobe Photoshop. So that combined with the trouble of getting things set up properly can make it a little bit of a pain in the butt. Now, I'm obviously not here to bash on Linux. I do love having Manjaro as a uh, second operating system on my computer. Uh, the only point I'm really trying to make with this video is that it is tricky um, 
to actually just cast Windows aside altogether. So you can see on my desktop, I have StarCraft 2 installed on Linux, and it does work fine using the Lutris Gaming uh, install script. You can also get Hearthstone working. I did a recent updated video on that on the channel. But getting every game you want to work on Linux and every program you want to work on Linux usually doesn't work that way. And when it comes to software that you can find on Linux, often you can also find it on Windows. So GIMP is not Linux exclusive. It's obviously on Windows too. So a lot of users obviously not going to like all of that. So that's pretty much going to be it for this video. I just wanted to make the case on why if you just go ahead and install Linux and Linux alone, you may have some gripes about it. Um, and often you might find yourself resorting back to having Windows there as well. So I've been Chris, that's gonna be it for this video. If you agree or disagree, feel free to comment down below, just my opinion on the matter, and I will see you guys in my future video content.